Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for joining me. So um, we're here with uh, um, Anna Baxter of Paragon Testing Enterprises. And uh, this is the CELPIP Reading Strategies Workshop. So um, today we're going to be um, doing a CELPIP Reading uh, Strategies Workshop. We have, uh, this is the first time we're doing CELPIP Reading. We have done speaking and writing in the past and we've done uh, general webinars together. But this is the first time we're going to do a CELPIP reading workshop. So this is kind of a new, hopefully it's going to work and uh, um, it's going to be quality content for all. So my name is Maciej Blazik and I'm the director of Summerhill Online Academy an online language school. And my guest here is Anna Baxter from Paragon Testing Enterprises. <laughs> Thank Hello. you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Well, I, it's a pleasure to be here, especially with uh, Summerhill Online Academy. We've done quite a few presentations now together, and we're always happy to join in and help out anytime we can. So uh, my name is, as Mache mentioned, my name is Anna Baxter, and I do work for Paragon Testing Enterprises. So I'll be helping out just to add in any additional information, little strategies, little tips here and there. But the main information will definitely come from Ache. He's going to help you to focus on certain things, certain areas that are important in the reading section. So we will talk about that as well. And for anyone viewing us today, if you do have any technical issues, we always uh, recommend that you log off and log back in again, because sometimes uh, little things might come up where you can't hear us properly, or maybe the, the, there's interference. Um, just Try to log back in again or using Chrome is usually the best uh, platform for this type of webinar as well. So just let us know. There is a question box that is there. I believe it's on the right hand side of your screen. Um, in the question box, you can ask us any questions. We'll be happy to respond to your questions. So anytime you want to ask us, go ahead. I might at times interrupt Mache for some questions while we're we're listening to the presentation. So just let us know and we'll be happy to help out. Yes, by, by all means, do interrupt at, at any time you'd like to. And uh, so anyway, um, so our mission today, so on the menu, um, we're gonna talk self reading strategy. We're gonna talk about a general strategy for doing self reading in general. And this is a general approach to self reading and using this approach, you can tackle pretty much every section in self -tip. And um, so, and, and again, so each, if every section in the self reading can be tackled with this general reading strategy, but in order to test and sort of play around with this strategy today, we're going to look and focus on uh, writing, uh, reading task three which is especially tricky for a lot of people. Um, these are, so they're, 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 this is a very tricky um, section. I find a lot of my students have a lot of problems with this. And uh, towards the end, we're gonna have a quick Q and A session where we'll be able to answer any of your questions. And again, if you have any questions right now, please don't hesitate to start um, um, to, to, to write uh, anytime throughout the presentation. And both Anne and I are going to be um, trying to answer any of your questions. So you can um, definitely um, focus your questions to both myself and Anna. Anything um, you would like to add at this point, Anna? Uh, no, I know you're gonna start off. Um, I mean, I can always sort of do a quick revision of uh, the reading sections, but uh, I know you're going to be focusing specifically on part three of the reading, but uh, just to let people know, there are four sections in, in the reading. So it's part one, two, three, and four. Now in these sections, usually what happens is that it gradually gets a little bit more difficult. So the maybe the sentence structures are a little bit more complex, but you will notice like how things progress. So at the beginning in part one, it'll be pretty simple, but by the time you get to part four, it might get a little bit more complex. So you'll mm -hmm. notice that it will get uh, a little bit harder as you move through the sections. 
So, right. I mean, this is just something to be aware of. And again, vocabulary will increase. And I know that part three is one of the most challenging sections, which is why we have Maché here today to sort of help us tackle those uh, uh, complex structures, like what to do, how to manage that section. So it's always good to have additional information for that. So just so that everybody knows. So um, mm -hmm. for part one, just very briefly, it's usually an email and you'll have uh, two parts. So there's actually 11 questions in that section, but there's two parts to it because it's an email and then somebody responding to the email. Part two will be um, a diagram. So you're going to be looking at a diagram and applying that diagram in the reading sections to respond to that question. And usually there's going to be a main text, which has to do specifically with the visuals that you see. And then there will be also a, another section that will be somebody responding to an email. So part one and two is sort of very, very similar. And then we'll get to part three, which is reading for information. I'm not going to give you any more information about that because I know Mate is gonna be explaining that in detail. And then part four will be reading uh, for viewpoints, which basically means that uh, there's going to be people talking about maybe a certain uh, issue, maybe it's like a government issue or uh, something um, about um, maybe happening in society and um, people will give their own opinions or facts about that. So that's more for the viewpoints. But again, we're gonna go back into so I'm just going to have uh, Maché take it away. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So um, basically, let's begin and start talking about the general strategy for selfie reading. Now, as we know, there is more than one reading skill, and it's a combination of using more than one uh, practical reading skill in order to analyze the self of reading. Now, whenever you're doing a standardized language proficiency examination like CELPIP or any other test like this, um, it's all about timing. So with the self of reading, you actually have a very, um, very specific time constraint. So you're always fighting against time. And when you're thinking about reading, we're going to talk about three reading skills, which is called, which are called skimming, scanning, and reading. So there's actually, so so skimming is basically when you're looking just for a general idea. Scanning is when you're looking for particular piece for pieces of information within the text, and reading, well, that's something that you do like when you're reading a novel or when you're reading a book, right? But what's surprising for some is that for self reading, you actually do very little reading. And mostly what you're doing is you're doing skimming and scanning, and you have to do that because you don't have a lot of time. And self task three is, is definitely very challenging because you don't actually have time to read the whole text from the beginning to end. Okay, so this is going to be, so we're going to look at a two-step approach for, 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 for self-reading, reading, and it starts out with skimming. So skimming is the first thing that we're going to do. And again, skimming usually takes about one to two minutes. And, and generally speaking, it's just one minute. You don't want to be skimming for more than one minute, right? But basically, when you're skimming, you're finding the general idea of the text right you're finding the general idea of the text so you're just you're just moving your eyes through the text very quickly and you're getting the general idea of the text but you're also learning about the general structure so in just one minute time this is a skill by the way this is a skill skimming is a definite skill and in order to basically skim you're 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 looking at and focusing on the on on the general um structure of the reading and the general organization so basically for especially for self reading task three you're going to see a multi-paragraph piece of writing okay you're going to see a piece of reading so you're going to use multi-paragraph uh, uh text and generally speaking where would you get the general information 
right? So in that one minute, you're selectively focusing your attention to certain parts of the text. So first of all, where would we get the general idea of the text? We get it in the introduction. And it's usually in the last sentences of the introduction, because that's when we get a thesis. It's a, usually called a thesis statement or a general intent, right? So be, because the beginning of a text usually starts with a general idea, or it starts with a historical background about a particular issue, but it's in those last few uh, sentences of the introduction where we get the general point and the focus of the reading. So you usually get the idea in the beginning, in the introduction, in the last two sentences of the introduction. You also can find the general idea of the text in the beginning of the conclusion. Because in the conclusion, that's where we have a summary, where the author usually summarizes the general idea of the text. And later, there might be more opinions, predictions, um, uh, closing statements, but usually in those two, the first two sentences of the conclusion, that's where the author restates the main idea. So when you're getting the general idea of the text, those are two places where you can get it. Similarly, the body paragraphs usually have a topic sentence. So you can go ahead and find the general idea by looking for the first or second sentence of each body paragraph. So. In that one minute, you're selectively focusing your attention on, on particular parts. So you might want to read the last, the last two sentences of the introduction. You might selectively read the first sentence of each body paragraph, and you might selectively read through the uh, first sentences of the conclusion paragraph as well. So you're selectively focusing where you're gonna put your attention. The other thing that you're doing is you're moving your eyes through the text and you're picking up different kinds of information and things that jump out of you, uh, things that jump out was like names, people's names. You can see those capital letters, right? People's names, country names, dates, statistics. So as you're moving, as you're moving your eyes selectively through the text, you're, you're, you're finding what kind of information is in each body paragraph. Where can I get information about statistics or about particular countries? Um, so, and, and generally speaking, if you can skim, uh, if, if you can skim very quickly, in that one minute, you can usually get an idea. What's the beginning about? What's the beginning middle about? What's the ending middle about? And what's the end about? So you usually get the, you, you can sort of divide your attention and get a general idea about what each body paragraph represents, right? Would you like to add something to that? Sure, <laughs> okay. Now, before you get into all these details, I mean, just to sort of give you a background information. So here you're going to have exactly nine questions and you only have 10 minutes to respond to these questions. So it's important that you're not rereading the entire uh, text that you have there present because in each um, statement or each question that you have, you won't have enough time to reread everything. So I definitely agree with Maché. I mean, what you need to do is understand what these paragraphs are about. So the first thing to do is what's the topic? I mean, that's the first thing you could just quickly skim through it, preview it, look at it, start with what is the topic about. And once you, you understand that, then you start going into each uh, paragraph and understanding sort of what is the general context of each paragraph. Once you understand that, so if the paragraph, one paragraph talks about the history of pizza, okay, so that would be one part of it. And if that's mentioned in the statements, the nine questions that you have, if that's mentioned, then you know specifically where to look for the, the actual information. So before anything, even before reading the statement questions, start understanding the general topic and then what each general, what each paragraph is about. So that way it'll help you to be able to look for the correct information. So in the test, there will always be four paragraphs. So here, maybe we might have more or less because it is more of like a classroom setting. 
but on the test you will always have four paragraphs and it's typically like Che mentioned it's usually about a person place it could be a process it could be about how something works it could be an um, a historical event a landmark maybe somebody's life or a discussion of the habits of an animal so there's general things that could pop up in this section and yes it's going to be a little bit more informal but it's more um, formative text so they're going to give you some type of informational it could be more educational it could be descriptive but it's not an opinion so this is more facts than opinion now it won't be like an academic test because we're not uh, specifically looking at an article of a text so you don't have to be a, an expert to understand this so it's made for the general audience so you should be have a, a good idea of what this uh writing is about or the text is about okay so okay. oh and then i know much is going to explain that each paragraph will have a letter it'll say a b c d and then there's going to be an e section but i'll let much explain that yeah, so um, that basically that's right. So the, so each section it's labeled A, B, C, D, E. And again, A, B, C, D, and then there's the E, which is the other option, which means, and we're gonna talk about what E means. Um, but basically the general thing is, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start with skimming. Because if your skimming skills are good, you can get the general idea about the organization, which then works perfectly with the scanning. So your ability to scan a document is in many ways related to your skills as a skimmer. So if you can skim well, you can get a general idea so that when you're scanning and finding particular pieces of information, you're, you're, you're not looking through a needle in a haystack. You already know where you're putting your attention. So you're not just reading and rereading. And again, that's the point. You don't wanna be reading and rereading the text. You wanna be able to consume as much information as you can in that, in that one minute. Now, actually today, if you're just joining us, right? Scanning is basically related to skimming because with scanning, you're actually searching for particular pieces of information in the text. And again, remember that you know, the actual statements that you're looking for and the information you're looking for will be usually paraphrased. So even though there are some key terms we can find, um, so with scanning, we're, 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 we're looking for particular pieces of information which is contextually uh, um, is similar or, or, or related, but it's not always going to be the same words. Now, actually, if you're just joining us right now, we're doing, we're focused on reading task three. And as Anna mentioned, again, for this particular task, you only have 10 minutes. And so in this, so it's, it, there's always going to be the A, B, C, D paragraph, and then there's an option for E and it's not given in any of these paragraphs. So for this particular type of task, you have a drop down menu of A, B, C, D, and you get to choose, you get to choose which body paragraph you can find that information, or you choose E, meaning you can't find that information in the text, right? So actually, if you're just joining us, you can download a, a, a handout for today's class. So it's not ne absolutely necessary for you to download this handout if you, if, if you don't have time at the moment. But you, if you go to the handout section, you're going to see a document called SAGE. And so this is actually an article uh, written by um, Vice Magazine. And you can actually download that text. And again, it's a text which is very similar to the kind of reading that we would get in self of reading. It has about the same kind of vocabulary, right? So if you're just joining us, it's not necessary 100% for you to do this, but if you'd like to follow along and have a more realistic um, experience with self of reading, because again, it's very difficult sometimes to read a computer screen, especially on slides. So if you download the document, you can switch between our webinar and the actual document, and that way you'll be able to have a more comfortable reading experience. Um, if you have dual screen options, um, that's also a great option for you too. So, so first of all, please hand, uh, please download the handout which is on the, if you take a look at the sections, you can just pull down the, the, the um, uh, pull down the menu and you can download that document. So 
First of all, we're going to start with interacting with the text. So in order for us to, for, for, for this to, to, to actually work, um, we're going to go ahead and skim. So how long are we allowed to skim? We're going to give ourselves one minute because as Anna mentioned, you have 10 minutes to do this task and you have nine questions to find. So usually one minute for skimming and then one minute for each of those questions. So each of those questions will be one minute. Okay. So if you already got it, uh, if you've already downloaded it, we're going to, we're going to start with actually skimming. So I'm going to give the class now I'm going to give our, this is more of a classroom setting here. We're going to give ourselves one minute. So in that one minute, you're going, you guys are going to come with me and you're going to skim this document. Okay. We're going to skim this document. Remember, you're going to spend one minute. You do not need to read everything, right? Read between the lines, right? And again, um, you should be focusing on the last sentences of the introduction, the first sentences of the conclusion and the first or second sentence of each body paragraph. Right, you're reading between the lines. You're not. If if you if you're still reading after a minute, if you don't get to the very bottom of, uh, uh, after that one minute, you're doing something wrong. It's supposed to be just one minute, and you're just getting the general idea of the structure, right? And again, pay attention to the kind of information: those names, country names, um, dates, uh, statistics acronyms anything that pops out right anything that pops out in the information because that information might be useful later when you're trying to find information within the body paragraphs right and again all you want to know is what's the beginning about what's the beginning middle about what's the ending about right and what's the, fi the final portion so what are those four four paragraphs all about so without any do uh, without any uh, um questions I'm going to let the audience read. So I'm putting the, the text on the screen for any of you who don't want to download the handout or is not comfortable with the dual screen option. But in case you do have a dual screen option or you'd like to download this, we're working on this. So first of all, the most exciting part, I'm giving everybody one minute to carefully skim to this document. Okay? Let's do this. Ten seconds. And that's it. That's all we get. One minute and we've uh, basically skimmed through the, through the entire document. So even in that one minute, now, now hopefully everyone got to the very end of the document in that one minute. And if you didn't, in the event that you didn't, um, that you were still you, you got through half of the document um again you're doing something wrong it's only when we're skimming we're not reading deeply we're just focusing our attention to the pertinent parts of the the document and we're only looking at the kind of information but in that one minute it's actually quite surprising how much you can absorb in terms of general organization right so in that one minute we can generally find um, the general or organization of, of the document. And again, this is a skill. It's a skill, right? Most of us don't do this on a regular basis, right? Most of us don't, in, don't consume um, uh, readings in this way. 
we're not used to just always being in that one one minute one minute window and trying to absorb as much information this is a very test specific skill so it is a skill that you have to learn you have to practice this Anna, would you like to add anything yes i was just uh responding to somebody who had a little bit of trouble uh finding the document it it's not found online for anybody who's, who's asking right now there should it be in the box there should be a section that says handouts if you click on the box you will see a word document that says sage so just click on the blue uh, word document and you should be able to download it okay. now okay. yes i think for for anyone who I mean, the idea in one minute, it's not to read every single little detail of the article. What you need to do is just sort of grasp an idea as to what each paragraph talks about. So the first thing is, what's the, the, the topic about? So that would be the first thing on my mind. So if anyone could wants to respond, what is this topic about? Just by looking at the information quickly, what is the topic about? And then go to each paragraph and figure out what each paragraph now is talking about. And by having that, that will definitely help you to respond to the questions. Right. Okay, so that's that's perfect. Um, yeah, so for, she, she got it, fantastic. So again, skimming through it, so step number one, right? Step, step number one, we're gonna do a nice one minute skim through the document because skimming helps us with our second um, skill, which is called scanning right and with scanning you're actually searching for particular information so we're going to actually do this twice so first of all let's do some easy scanning okay so we're going to start looking at the document and as you as you guys are with us please type the answer which paragraph has the word fukushima anybody now now, now pull Someone. away from your perspective Please. Okay, we got a few responses already. It yes. has, uh, says D. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was, got a lot of D's now. <laughs> that's, it, that's good. Lots of D's. Okay. That was easy, right? That was easy. There it is. Fukushima. It's in the bin. Yeah. And again, it's got the big F, right? We're just looking for that. Okay. It catches our attention because we already we've already did did some scanning. We we already picked up that these words. Can, can sort of exist so it's a little bit easier to find okay let's keep going which paragraph has 50 year old <laughs> whoa like instantly very good okay we've got yeah, a few yeah, 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 i won't there, say there, anything yeah, yet until we get a few it, more responses it's in paragraph okay. e can you tell paragraph e that oh. was an easy one and again you're looking very for good. those key terms right because it's a number right it has hyphens Right, this is easy. This is so easy, right? Let's take a look. Let's just make it a little he bit more challenging. He tested that on me, and I took longer. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's the next one. Ron. Where do we have the word Ron? Okay. And again, when you're looking at this, you're not reading. You're just moving your eyes through the text. You're looking for those capital letters, right? I mean, Ron. It's a person's name. Anybody? Oh, we got two responses, two different responses that I see. The majority have one response, but there are some that are, has given me a different response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so again, it's gonna be B, it's gonna be paragraph B, there it is, right? Wrong, yeah. right? Again, you're looking at, and again, this is easier. This is a little bit easier. This is the easy version uh, of scanning because we're <laughs> looking for words which are exactly the same words in the text, right? when it's the same word because there are some words that will never be changed like if it's an official name or name of a person a historical date those things cannot be altered so there will be even technical words if it's the name of a product for example that cannot be altered so there, there's no paraphrasing there's no changing of it so those ones usually are the easiest to select and easy to identify has anyone found goop Anybody? Is that the next word? Goop. That's the next word. Goop. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got a few responses already. Look at that. You guys are very yeah. quick. I'm 
I'm surprised because I oh, couldn't yeah. find Goop. It took me like 30 seconds <laughs> to find Goop. Yeah, I yeah. So like, where we, is we, it? We, 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 we have a small, smart crowd here. You're very good. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's paragraph D. There it is. Goop. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, yeah. it. okay, let's keep going. Slightly. So, so we've started. That was easy scanning. Yeah. That was yeah. easy scanning. Now it's time for hard scanning. <laughs> At this point, you're going to have to type it. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at paraphrased words. So I'm actually going to make this particular question a little bit easier. So again, if you have your, if you have, if you can, if you have your document, where can we find criminal hunters? Anybody? Now remember, we're not looking for specific words that say criminal hunter. So now you have to look for words or phrases that mean something similar. So if you could right. type out the, the actual phrase or the word, I know there are some people mm -hmm. that look like they found it in the paragraphs, but if you actually know what similar meaning there is, just let us know what it is. Yeah. Okay, has anyone found it? Which paragraph did we see criminal hunters? Anybody found it? We have A and B. Is that okay. A possibility. <laughs> Possibilities, much more challenging, much more challenging. Right. So actually this one is gonna be- I think be you, in you could help them maybe C. first with a paragraph and leave it there and then see yeah. if they can find where can the find, words are. Can you find, can someone find words that mean criminal hunters? Now, much easier. It's in paragraph Not the C. exact words. Yeah. Not the exact words. Anybody? Something that like... means similar. Yeah. Oh, nice. Somebody got it. Good. Yeah, somebody All got right. it. That's Yay. great. All right. Actually, Very people. good. It's poachers. Right. Yes. Poachers, right? Criminal hunters. So this is actually paraphrased. So mostly when you're scanning, you're scanning for questions like this. Yes, you can rely on some key terms like dates, names, country names, statistics, right? But mostly you're looking for context. This is much more challenging. Okay, next one. It's definitely it challenging, is. especially if you don't know the word. So that's where yeah. it becomes a little bit more advanced, this section. Yeah. Okay. So next Ooh, word is feelings. Thing. It's a like tough so one. Many so words many words feelings. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This this was okay. So, okay, it's so you're helping them out then. I'm helping you out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because that would be really feelings. Helpful. Can you find okay. a word that, that means feelings? In, so something in, in, in paragraph A that means feelings. Okay. Okay, we got one. Nice. We got one? Yeah. I liked how one person put sort of a definition of like one example of feelings, but not the definition of feelings. <laughs> okay, that, okay that's actually very interesting that would be something okay. i would mention though <laughs> okay so feeling that's a very really hard one if you found it it's going to be mood right mood feelings okay let's keep so going here just before you continue this is just a synonym so there is somebody that wrote the word angry and angry i thought that was a great response um, but it's more of the definition, like different types of moods that you can feel or different types of feelings that you can have, like anger, happiness. But that's now the definition, but it's not the synonym. So we're trying to, I mean, those are examples of feelings, but we're looking for the synonym of feelings, which was mood. So that's what uh, Maché was looking for, but it was good. I'm glad somebody put something else down. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving. Let's, this, yeah. this is getting a little bit fun. Okay major industrial accident wow <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna leave it for just a second here can someone find it okay which let's paragraph? start with which paragraph and then we'll yeah. we'll go into that paragraph so oh somebody put something already wow very good <laughs> yeah yeah there you go perfect yeah yeah don't say anything yet <laughs> i want to see what other responses i mean just to make it easier first what paragraph do you think you could find this information in? what paragraph and then we're we're going to look into the specific phrase one more moment okay. one more minute and remember this is you'll you'll have these questions you only have about a minute to search let's take a look so here we go let's reveal it it's going to be in paragraph d 
Yay, majority got it correct. I mean, if you didn't, don't worry. I mean, this is a practice and this is sort of what we're we're trying to do. We're okay to make mistakes and we're learning from all this too. <laughs> I know okay, I so am. <laughs> has, has anyone found it? What, what words in this text show oh, major industrial <laughs> accidents? Anybody? Ooh. Wow, I like these words though that people have come up with. They're, we've gotten different responses here, so that's good. Okay, we got okay. a few correct. <laughs> oh, nice. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, let, let's go ahead and review. It's going to be nuclear disaster, right? Nuclear disaster. Again. Okay, good, good, good. Let's go for the next one. I think, I think it's a, it's good to just sort of give you an idea. Like for a disaster, it's something that's really big. I know somebody put cleaning products, but that wouldn't be, well, you could have like a minor disaster maybe. <laughs> if it's nuclear, it's much, much bigger. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. Yeah, major industrial accident, right? Okay, so again, totally paraphrased, right? We're looking for the context. Let's do one or two more, I think. After park hours. I thought this was an interesting one. This one took a, a, a little bit of, of time for me to, to find, but it's a good one. <laughs> so which paragraph would we find this information? Okay, we got some paragraphs going here. Okay. Just the letter. That's all we're looking for right now. And then we'll yeah. ask the specifics afterwards. Oh, nice. Somebody already yeah. got something. <laughs> yeah, they found it good. That's wonderful. Yeah. Maybe this was easier then <laughs> compared to the industrial accident. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's going to be in paragraph A. Yay. Okay, now it's not mood. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anybody got good. it? We there got a few couple people that yeah. got the right answer yeah nice nice that's very good that's good yeah. speed that's actually great yeah. so yeah closing time right we Hi. found it okay do we have any more <laughs> no i think i, I think it's right it, it, it's it's time for the next one so we, we so again step number one we're going to spend one minute just skimming the document and by a, by being able to skim through the document we already are able to establish a general idea. And this is key because once you're able to get the general idea of the organization of your reading, your scanning is gets much, much easier, right? So you're basically able to find information, right? So now we're ready for a matching question. So this, this we were just doing an easy scanning activities with, with some of these particular words. But in, in many ways, again, you don't have a lot of time. You only have 10 minutes for this, right? And again, so one minute to scan all four uh, paragraphs, get the general idea, and then you get to pick that drop down menu and choose A, B, C, and D. So you have these questions, and basically there's, there's a list of statements. You're gonna get nine statements, and your job is to find the paragraph that has this information. It's usually paraphrased. But you also, it's a little tricky here, you may also have to select E, which means that this information doesn't exist in the text. We have no idea where that information is coming from or it's opposite. Sometimes it's very similar to the meaning, but, but, but it's paraphrased. Something's changed, something like an opposite meaning in many ways. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we have our questions here. And so you have your handout. You, you can actually see these questions in your handout. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first question. So a political display has diminished the Rangers' enthusiasm for some sports. So let's start with that question. Can anyone find that? Where will we find that particular information? So is it A, B, C, or D? And we do yes. have a, a very a, B, interesting, C, I have a very interesting question for you for later, but uh, yes. we'll first <laughs> try to find that response. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we've got different responses. I like that. Ooh, okay. 
tricky, right? Oops. It was not as simple then. <laughs> my lights. Lost my light. <laughs> I feel like you should okay. clap for the lights <laughs> to go on. Yeah, I have, I have a little clapper here. Can anyone find it? Anyone find the information? We got different responses. We got different responses. Okay, so that information. B, if that's correct. It is true. It's B. Absolutely, right? So yes, it's in paragraph B, right? He also loves football, though he hasn't watched a game since players began taking the knee, right? So if you guys remember, taking the knee was a kind of a political statement that many, um, uh, many athletes were displaying their solidarity, right? So there you go. Okay, let's let's try another one. Let's let's, let's keep going. Okay, and by the way, this is a skill. You get better at this. Okay, let's do oh, before two. you go, hold on, hold on. Before you oh, go yeah, question. to the yeah. next question. Yes. Uh, when we start, re when do we start reading the question? Is it after skimming? Yes. So That's basically, you start out with the skimming. So basically, start out by skimming the entire document. Save the questions for second. That's the second thing on your menu. So basically, you have 10 minutes and you have nine questions. One of those minutes, you're going to spend skimming and getting the general idea of the organization. And then you're going to roughly spend one minute for each of the questions, finding that information. And big tip too, if you don't find it, it's not there. Right? Just put Oh, in. that's a good point. If you don't find it, don't spend another minute trying to look for the responses because most likely it's not there. And that's the whole point. And it's not mentioned. And then the response is E. So, yeah. yeah. So here we go. Okay. Let's go to number two. Yeah. So again, which paragraph? Regular criminal activity has caused a reduction in the amount of sage present within nature reserves in South California. And again, we've already done a little bit That's of skimming. That's a mouthful. <laughs> That's a mouthful, yeah. Anybody, let's take a look. Remember where they were talking about sage. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and put your responses on. <laughs> <laughs> I think this was a challenging one. We're getting yeah. Here. This is the challenging. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is challenging. But I, I'm seeing some, 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 some. We're getting some answers here. But yeah. um, hints. Remember uh, where we've already found. Okay. We might need a little nudge here. <laughs> a little bit of a nudge. Okay. It's going to be paragraph. Anybody? Do we get a majority of, uh, oops, oops, oops. What happened? Oh, we have a few. I like how they put, I think it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Without further mystery, it's going to be C, paragraph Yay. C. Hey, okay. I like how um, they put that. I think it's C. <laughs> yeah, Go yeah. I think, uh, so there it is. It says almost oh. daily there were poachers right. in the reserve harvesting hundreds of pounds at a time. Very good. Somebody actually put the the, the correct response, the information there. Oh, that's Yay. very good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's excellent. Okay, let's keep going. Just a quick Everything. reminder, when you are yes. responding, if you're not sure about the response, please choose something. Don't leave it blank. You don't lose any points by leaving it blank. It's best you choose something and you might end up get at least, you know, 25% sort of chance or less 20% chance of getting it correct, but better to respond. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. You should never leave any area blank when you're doing your self reading or self listening, always put something into the answer. Always give a, a particular answer. And for this particular question, if you can't find it, then you can't find it. Don't spend more than one minute. That's enough. That's one minute is the is the maximum of time you can dump for each of those questions. And then you just move on to the next one. If you can't find it, mark it E. So next one, 
staying after park hours within a state park can have legal ramifications. This is a challenging one as well. Yeah, we have two two options here. So <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you got some, yeah, a couple. Of, nah, that's cool. That's cool. You know, and just uh, and again, this is hard. This is this is difficult. This is a a, yeah. a challenging task. It's meant to be challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, there's two different responses inside of one <laughs> or the other. That's it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So go ahead. Give us what the response All is. All right. <laughs> the answer. Okay. I won't tease you anymore. It's A. It's paragraph A. Yeah. It's right. interesting here because a lot of people put either A or E. So mm -hmm. where in this paragraph can we find that, that response? It's going to be here. It was past closing time and a park ranger in uniform was locking the gates. They ran to catch him, especially expecting a ticket. In addition to being late, they brought their dog against the rules, right? Additionally, it says, if you pick anything, right, I'll have you arrested. So there, there was a lot of information about legal ramifications of staying in, in, in the park, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So that was good. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, the, nope. the, the responses from the students are great because we had one who actually wrote the full paragraph of it. That's great. That's good. That's yeah. good. Okay, number four. The ranger verbally abused Masha Valencia because she broke the law. Okay. Let's see what responses we're going to get. This is exciting. Mm-hmm. Are all your classes this much fun? <laughs> uh, I, I would hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it's a, learning learning about self reading doesn't have to be painful. It can be fun, <laughs> and that you know, it's 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 it's, it's nice. It's, it improves yeah. language ability. Okay, so any responses here? Again, I feel like it's between two options. Usually E is one of the options and then it's something else. <laughs> okay, so so mostly, so congratulations. If you were the students who um, wrote E, that's fantastic Yay. because there's no, you can't find this information anywhere, right? There's no verbal abuse. The ranger, whatever we, we know about the ranger, he wasn't verbally abusing, right? So he wasn't cursing or putting down. Um, he was just, you know, so so absolutely you know if you don't know it's e stick with your gut your gut instinct if you can't find that information in that minute just put e move into the next one okay here we go two more questions some countries sage has been used as part of an effort to slow mass infection let's see if anybody can find this Ooh, good response there. there are a lot of people that responded here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're just gonna move. We, we don't want to torture you guys for too long, but it's gonna be D. If you got yes. D, there it is. Absolutely. Already put Absolutely. D. Yeah. That's excellent. I, I feel like people are getting a little bit e, like it, it, they're you're getting faster as we go along. Yeah. Right? You get faster. It's a skill. Last one. Okay. This is the last question. Martha's personality and lifestyle 
are remarkably different from the rangers. This is the last one here. Right? And again, if, if you did your skimming, if you did your skimming and you did it right, and you got that general organization, you should be able to find contextually what that information is, right? We, because you, you, you remember what the general context of interaction was. How are we doing with those responses, Anna? Oh, pretty good. We have the majority there already, yeah. Wow, so it's sort of a toss up. It's <laughs> majority a toss -up. say B. If that's the correct answer, majority say B. And then we have it's some B. E, P, C. B. B. <laughs> that's good. We have a mix, right? Absolutely, right? Right. In almost every respect, she is unlike the ranger who loves beer, cruel jokes, and maintaining order. He also loves football, though he hasn't watched a game since players began taking a knee. Right? A, a, a clear um comparison right so basically um there you go that, that's pretty much all the answers by the way the handout that i uh, i sent you guys has uh, an additional four questions for you guys to play with so if you if you've downloaded the handout there are four more questions for you to play with so that's a challenge for you to see if you're if you can find that information and uh, but uh, yeah there you go so again, for, let, let's, just, let's just summarize together. So put, uh, summarize what we've learned together. For self-breeding task three, again, skimming and scanning is a vital part for self-breeding for all four sections. So in every section, you're going to have to depend on skimming and scanning in order to solve those questions in a timely manner. But specifically for task three, Step number one, you're going to skim the whole passage. You're not going to read de deeply. You're just getting a general idea about the document. You're focusing on the last sentences of the introduction, the first sentences of the conclusion. You're also looking at the specific types of information. Anything that pops out, names, phone numbers, uh, I mean, names, dates, uh, people, country names, statistics, anything that shows up there that, that, that we could possibly use. So one minute, you're going to be scamming, uh, you're going to be skimming the in, in entire passage. Two, you're going to read the questions and identify any key terms. Now, key terms are words which pop out, which are impossible or difficult to paraphrase. A lot of the times, the words that you're going to find in those questions, in those statements, are actually paraphrases. So you're not going to see the same words right in inside of the body uh, 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 of the paragraphs but sometimes you can rely on some paraphrases as well and finally you scan the document for the paragraph with this information right and remember so you're reading the question and then you're going to scan the document until you find the right information right and then you read the sentences in the paragraph and choose your answer and remember if you can't find it if you spend more than a minute if you, you don't spend more than a minute doing this if you can't find it, it's E. It doesn't exist. Believe in, like, trust your gut instinct, right? Gut, trust your gut instinct. So, um, so I think it's time for some questions and answers. So, um, I, so we're just going to finish off here. We've already done an, an hour of self-reading today, but in and, and great to see uh, uh, most of you stuck stuck with us for the entire um, duration of the presentation. <laughs> Right, and participated, but okay. uh, this is my opportunity to answer any of your questions. So, are there any questions? You have uh, somebody had a question. I'm not sure. They said it was about question number three, but I wasn't sure what they were asking. It says Valencia meditates and sits in uh, the woman's circles. Her vibe is abundantly. Uh, abundantly present in almost every aspect she is unlike the ranger ron goodman who loves beer crew jokes and then maintaining order but they said it was for three 
protection and staying after park hours of a state park can have legal ramifications. Well, but that's not, it doesn't really relate to you. It wouldn't say it, it would relate. Yeah, right? I'm not I'm sure about that one. Any, any other questions for us? Okay, let's see. Uh, in the self -it test, can't we highlight keywords in the passages? Unfortunately, well, not. <laughs> yes. No. But what I do recommend in that case is, especially for people who have a shorter retention span, like if you read a paragraph and then you might forget some important information and you have to go back, reread the same paragraph. In that case, and this is for anybody, I would recommend like if you're reading a paragraph and you have an idea what that paragraph is about, write it down because you will have a piece of paper there with you. So even if it just jot down two words, it doesn't have to be full sentences, but to give you an idea, if it's like a historical fact in that section or something very specific, write it down. Just a few words to help you remember. So once you read the statement, then you'll be like, oh, I remember that was from paragraph B. And then you can go back and just read paragraph B carefully. So those are just things to, to remember. Unfortunately, no highlighting words. No, no. It says where to find the materials to practice. When you go to cellpip.ca, you will have two free tests. So automatically you open an account without even having to register for the test, you will receive free tests. So after this presentation, an hour later, you will receive an email from us and we will put in all the free resources, the information. Plus, because you joined us today, you are also getting um, one of the materials that's called uh, CellPip Accelerate Reading and Writing. That usually has a cost of $25, but we're giving you a voucher code so you can get it for free. So you will receive that today after an hour of the presentation. Plus, you will also get this video. So we are recording it and you will receive it later on. So just so that people know that. Oh, we're getting lots of questions. So let me go back. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So materials to practice. Oh, it's not related, but they want to know when is the next schedule. Miche? <laughs> so uh, the next schedule, um, so we are Summer Hill on that Academy, and we have private and group classes. Now, our private classes are available all the time, so you can always um, ask around. And again, you can you can find me at summerhillonlineacademy.com, and you can register for a free 30-minute consultation. And, uh, and I can tell you uh, personally about each problem, so uh, our, about our pro program. So our, and you can also uh, contact Anna at a Baxter at paragontesting.ca. But our next group classes starts this March 1st, 2020, uh, 2021. So um, our group classes, it's a intensive four week course. It's uh, Monday to Friday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, Toronto time. And um, also we have six, uh, we have also 6 p.m. and, and 8 p.m. Um, uh, Pacific time. So actually we have two versions of the course because uh, we're, we're, we're Summerhill Online Academy. So we're, we're available to, uh, for, for, to, to all of Canada from coast to coast. So um, it's, it's a great four week course. It's two hours a day. You can download a free course outline from the website. So if you go to my website, you can actually um, register for an inquiry form. But if you take a look at our program, CELPIP program, there is a section where you can actually download, uh, you can download a um, course, the complete course outline. And um, you can, I, I can actually show the audience where you can find that information. So if you go to Summerhill Online Academy and you go to our programs and you go to self preparation, you go to group preparation, you can go ahead and register here, but you can also download these supporting documents. So this is a full course outline and it has a breakdown of everything that you're going to be doing in those classes. And again, we have a, we, we are, a, um, so uh, we are um, a, 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 a certified CELPIP preparation center for Paragon. All of our teachers are CELPIP certified. Um, and um, I think it's a great program. And uh, um, I, I hope uh, um, you enjoy it. So in our next registration, 
is is um, so is our, our next classes begin March 1st. And again, if you're if you're attending uh, from Vancouver, um, so we have Toronto and Vancouver time from 6 to 8 p.m. So which is perfect for after work. So you can still yeah. work and attend. And again, it's a four week special. course. Yeah, it's a four week course. And we do yeah. and it, it covers all the parts, right? I think the questions now that we have is sort of nitpicking because they're, they're looking, they're analyzing all the sentences. So one of the questions says, I felt question three should be E. The paragraph did not say anything about having legal ramifications beyond the curfew. These are really getting into the specifics, which is good, I think. Yeah, that's, that's analyzing good. all the responses. Yeah, that's, and somebody that's wanted good. to verify the additional four questions answer or I guess maybe it might be question number four mm -hmm, that's right um yeah I can I can definitely do that so um so basically um for for the rest of the questions I'm going to go ahead and um I'm going to actually share that in the in the text so if if you're looking at sage um, and you're looking for the answers to all of the questions here. I'm just going to copy and paste the answers directly oh, into, good idea. into the chat here. So I'm going to just mm -hmm. put it right straight into the chat. So if you're interested. Great. Thank you. I think that's all there, we there, need. There it is. There <laughs> you go. So that's it, right. I believe. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think we all received it. Uh, let's see. We know everything has to do with the questions. So just in case like if people want to verify the responses. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that is all for questions. So, I mean, just in general, it's always best to practice ahead of time, whether it's the reading sections or any other sections, make sure to uh, do this ahead of time. Um, for somebody is asking if there's any discounts, the only one we're able to give you for free today is the Celtip Accelerate, which are instructional videos. It's actually a really good uh, information for anybody who just wants to practice in general. They'll give you some tips and strategies. They'll break it down very in a very simplified manner. But uh, so you will be getting that for free today, which is the self accelerate reading and writing. And since we were doing reading today, it just seemed fit to give you something additional uh, for today. So thank you there <laughs> for <Right>. that question. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been keeping our audience for about an hour. So I, if there are no other burning questions, uh, we're just going to leave, leave it at that. Um, again, thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, CELPIP workshop. Um, we, we, our next one will be about listening. So we're hoping to take a look at um, 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 different sections of, of, of CELPIP. So our next session will be about listening. And we may come back and focus again because we regularly do these webinars. So um, you, you can... Uh, you can look at my YouTube channel at summerhillonlineacademy.com. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us. And thank you, Anna, for, 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 for being thank here. You. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. <laughs> thank you for yes. everything. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think we're well, good. Well, good night, everyone. I hope you enjoy your evening or afternoon, whichever, <laughs> depending on where you are. But thank you for joining us today. Okay, thank you. Take care. <laughs> Bye, everyone.